musical culture of Turkey and Greece. And as you heard now, to the liberators, America, France, Britain, and Russia. And they graciously offered to include the symphony in their upcoming Carnegie Hall concert, along with a recital of a Hebrew prayer from Salonika, which was sung in Russia. So Dr. Menashe used to tell me that in 1898, he was born a Turk in Salonika. But in 1912, he became a Greek. When he went to France in the 1920s, and so tonight I also have to thank the Holocaust Memorial Tolerance Center of Nassau County, Andrea Bolander. Welcome, distinguished guest. Uh, I would like to thank Stein uh, Rehan Uzger, our Consul General in New York, for having us this beautiful Turkish house tonight. And um, he's so staying. And they've been working a long time to have this night uh, ready tonight. So I am the president of Turkish American Art Society of New York, uh, which is which we call the TASNI. TASNI is a 501c3 uh, not-for-profit organization. We have three branches in TASNI. One is Karagöz Everywhere, which is a Turkish shadow play. The other one is. We do that. We do that in English uh, throughout America. Last four years, we did Karagöz uh, kind of shows in English over 36 states. So we, the society, works on that. Still, we have a good community uh, of, of artists working on uh, shadow play. Also, we have a, a contemporary and traditional theater, uh, one of the branches. And the latest, we have added new Manhattan Sinfonietta. New Manhattan Sinfonietta is an orchestra, a classic orchestra, was found by Maestro Gurer Aykal in 2016. Tazni and uh, Maestro Gurer Aykal, we have um, collaborated and established this orchestra in two years. Already we have done two great um, big concerts at the Carnegie Hall. One in 2018 called A Call for World Peace. We collaborated with Japanese government, and then ja a, so we uh, collaborated with Japanese government in that uh, concert, and that was our first concert at the Carnegie Hall. And the second one, we did a Anatolian Inspirations with the um, world-renowned maestro Gurarakal, and he conducted uh, the orchestra that he established in New York. And now, finally, we're going to be doing a hymns from Auschwitz concert, which actually we met two years ago with Renan Cohen. It all started at the United Nations concert. And I have seen some of these distinguished guests over there. And I know uh, since then we have been working together and collaborating with, especially with Holocaust Memorial Tolerance Center of Nassau County and Sephardic Brotherhoods. And, um, Am I missing some others? Yes, there's so many others are involved as well, but we have been collaborating and bring this, bringing this concert on January 20th. And it'll, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it was supposed to be January 26th, but it was because of the uh, all, uh, COVIDs, we had to bring it down to this day. This, uh, so April 20th, we'll be at, Car at Carnegie Hall at 8 p.m. and. Uh, and New Manhattan Sinfonietta will perform once more uh, for this concert. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to ask everyone to be at the concert. And we are uh, promoting this concert. I think we're going to have a full house. We're already 80% up. And I think we just need to fill up another 20%. So we'll be uh, almost 3,000 people at the concert. Thank you very much. I'll see you all at the concert. So this concert is, uh, I may say, the architect for this concert, Renan and Ibrahim. They managed all the pieces. And I didn't know anything about Asael, but Renan told me that, and she said he was born in Selaniki. So Selanik, for a Turk, like a holy city, uh, because of Mustafa Kemal Pasha, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. So, when I was conducting in Selaniki, 
the leader of orchestra who one day took me the some part of uh, Selaniki. Uh, he said Turkish people were lived there, also Mustafa Kemal. And when we went there, also uh, we sat in a cafe, wonderful coffee, we had coffee, and we were looking for uh, some narrow streets. And, and he said, do you see a lady there cleaning a street on, on, his, on her home? I said, yeah, I do see. And he said, it must be Turkish. I said, how do you know? And he said, Greek people doesn't clean the streets. Something like that. Then he showed me the downtown, like, and he said, the, the Jewish people that live there. So, what I know, Asayani is like a Turkish composer for me, because the music are the same. So I worked this piece, and, and I never found inside that he is, uh, he never give, give, give up, you know. He, he, he knew that at the end the victory is going to come. And of course, a very dramatic music, very sad part. But as a conductor, I am going to take this uh, more. Anyway, when you come to concert, you will see that. But at the end, uh, Asael has eight bars, even more than eight bars, uh, music for uh, a national anthem of the United States. You know that. In this eight bars, if you look, if you listen carefully, you are going to hear also Marseille's France. You know the Marseille's. And also between that, and also uh, British uh, national anthem. When they finished, suddenly you are going to hear the Soviet Socialist. So, this is the cue I'm going to give you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Hi, thank you for coming. You heard some of the introductions already. But again, I want to start to say that I'm very happy to be back here at uh, the Turkish House. Uh, I remember being here years ago with the Quincentennial Foundation in Istanbul. At that time, we were here to express our gratitude for 500 years of peaceful coexistence of our Muslim, Christian, and Jewish friends together. And we're back here again to do the same now. And I want to thank Council General Rehan Muzgur and also Ibrahim Yazici from Turkish American Law Society. And you'll hear some more about some more other, other, our other sponsors as well. But I really want to tell you how the concert came to be. Um, you know that we are Sephardic Jews. And the Sephardic Jew, really the Spanish Jew, has a unique position in the Mediterranean world. As an example, I myself was raised in a Sephardic family here in New York. My father's family came to America from Turkey to, to avoid the Balkan Wars. And my mother's family came to America from Greece at the same time for the same reason. And at that time, tens of thousands of Spanish Jews from Greece and Turkey came to New York. But we still maintained our Hispanic identity in the East and in America for over 500 years. But the Spanish Jews are a distinct minority in the Jewish population in America. And because we, we consider ourselves both Greeks and Turks and Spanish and Jews and speak several languages, we maintained our culture, which we brought from cities from all over those countries that you know. Our people came from Salonika, the Saloniki, 
Athens, Yanina, Kasoya, Chios, Adrianople, Edirne, Rodosto, Tequilda, <coughs> Silivri, Stephanos, Constantinople, Istanbul, Chanakale, Rhodes, and so many other centers. Towns all over Turkey and Greece. Well, we came here, and here in New York, the very first center for the Spanish, for the Spanish Jews was really Spanish and Portuguese synagogue. And it was the first center, but we had many centers. We even had a center called Turkey House in Spanish Harlem on 114th Street in the 19, in the 1930s. But it was really the Sephardic home for the age of the book. A nursing home, especially for Spanish Jews, the Sephardic Jews from the Ottoman Empire in Greece, which was really the unifying place for our people. And it was there at that Sephardic home for the age that I met and befriended both Dr. Albert Menashe and Michelle Assel. Michelle was a popular Greek and Turkish musician here in New York. Both of them were Holocaust survivors. Dr. Menashe was a doctor, but he survived in a concentration camp mostly because he was a musician. He was a transmitter of that special universal language, music. After his liberation, he wrote a book about the Greek Jews' experience in World War II. That book, Beer Canal Auschwitz II, How 72,000 Greek Jews Perished, was about the Nazi destruction of the Jewish community in Greece. Thankfully, there was no Nazi Holocaust in Turkey. Another survivor from Thessaloniki, Michel Assel, also survived through his music. And he was inspired by Dr. Menashe's book to write the symphony that you'll hear for the first time 75 years after its composition, its premiere performance in Carnegie Hall next week. So those two men were my father's generation, but I befriended both of them. And it was through the book, through Dr. Menashe's book, that I learned about Michelle Assel's symphony. I often ask Michelle, to share the symphony with me. And I promised Dr. Menashe, Dr. Menashe that I would republish his book. But neither one of them ever expected anything from my promises. Michelle doubted that a young doctor might ever be able to set up a performance of the symphony that he himself wasn't able to, to, to set up. But in Spanish, we say, quien promete, indebda se mete. If you promise, you're indebted. Last year, I was able to republish Dr. Nash's book. And shortly after the republication, to my delight, his daughter, Deborah Assel, who I think is here tonight. Debbie, stand up. <coughs> Debbie forwarded the symphony to me. And here I have this music in my hand, and I'm not a musician. What could I do with it? I said to myself, maybe Michelle was right. But when I had first started working on the book, I had mentioned the music to my good friend Renan, who you know is a great Turkish musician, pianist, singer, writer, and teacher. And you'll meet her tonight. The Renan is Turkish. We met in Greece. We had traveled to Greece for Holocaust Remembrance programs in Castoria and Klisura. Like so many Sephardim, Renan's family also has roots in Greece and Turkey. Knowing Renan is a renowned musician, I sent her the score, and she shared it with Maestro, who had I call, and happily, they found the music serious, professional, modern, and yet in some ways true to the classical musical culture of Turkey and Greece. And as you heard now, to the liberators, America, France, Britain, and Russia. And they graciously offered to include the symphony in their upcoming Carnegie Hall concert, along with a recital of a Hebrew prayer from Salonika, which was sung in Ladino, the language of the Spanish Jews. It was also sung in the concentration camp as an ode to unending hope. The concert also includes a composition by a young Turkish composer, El Jirgur El Roktu, who's also here tonight, and you should stand up. And we know his music is dedicated to the memory of our past, but through his music, he's committed to a better future for all of us. 
So Dr. Menashe used to tell me that in 1898, he was born a Turk in Salonika. But in 1912, he became a Greek. When he went to France in the 1920s to study and practice medicine for 10 years, he became French. When he returned to Greece, he fought in the Greek army against the invading Italians. And then was able to survive the brutal persecution of World War II and torture imposed on him by the Nazis simply for being a Jew. Later, he became American. But Dr. Menashe often spoke to me about the inadequacies and dangers of the labels people apply to each other to no good end. And so, tonight I also have to thank the Holocaust Memorial Tolerance Center of Nassau County, Andrea Bolinder, director and chairperson, and Gail, Gail Peck, administrator, and Sam. And recognize that the Holocaust Memorial and Town Center of Nassau County is a bulwark against bigotry, regardless of faith and ethnicity. And we thank them for presenting this event in honor of our main sponsor, who couldn't be here tonight, another Sephardic Spanish Jewish American, Martin Elias, who also has roots in Castoria, Greece, and Istanbul, Turkey. And so I thank you all for coming, and I hope to see you all at the concert. And before the concert, I know I just want to wish you peace and recognize the sacrifices that all our friends are making now for Ramadan and Lent and Passover. And thank you all. Distinguished guests, years ago I was very impressed when I learned that the artist in prison in Theresienstadt continued to produce works even though it was forbidden. This inescapable curiosity led me to conduct research on composers who lived there and produced works. What I initially felt for Theresienstadt was a sense of closure which made me feel deeply saddened. However, after I received the words, I realized during the research and interpretation that in this reality of confinement, the composer's devotion to life and beyond that their desire and success to convey what they lived there for to future generations through music and to document them through music had prevented all kinds of obstacles. The highly disciplined formations that received during their musical education turned into a high in my own words positive resistance during their time at the Terzin concentration camp. When I studied the works of Pavel Haas, Gideon Klein, and Victor Ullmann, which I admire, I saw that each of these three composers was able to transform themselves again and again, every single day and every minute through music and in such a brutal and challenging environment. Until the moment they were sent to Auschwitz, or they lost their lives in Theresienstadt. As a musician and music therapist, I composed my education program called Positive Resistance Through Holocaust Reality for Youngsters by inspired those composers, and I started to my, my march of the music trip to Theresien with students which I demand a post-travel product from them. And then I make happen these products played, published, printed around the world. Because for me, meeting the productive and creative spirit within us and keeping it alive and finding our own authentic tone is the main condition of peace. As a result of my numerous lecture concert and training program on Holocaust with the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs for years, I had the honor of performing my lecture concert at the United Nations in New York on January 27, 2020. We started to talk about hymns for Auschwitz concert with, uh, with conductor Gure Raikal right after this concert, which was held thanks to the United Nations Permanent Embassy of Turkey and the Turkish Consulate General in New York. I consult, consulted the Maestro Raikal that I would like to order an orchestra work from my one of March of the Music students, Archie Gurai Göçtü, and he happily accepted it. Thus, I get ideal three musical themes from Greek Jewry experiences in Auschwitz. 
and he composed a magnificent work called Pins for Auschwitz, gave the title of the concert for Hazan Piano and Orchestra. In this remarkable work, Rabbi Hazan Nisimel Nekave and his student Iker Nahmias will be with us. As the maestro asked me what I would like to play as a soloist, I told I wanted to play the Mozart C minor piano concerto in honor of Viktor Ullmann. Viktor Ullmann was born in Teshen in what is now in Czech Republic in 1898. As a composer and music critic, he lived in Vienna and Prague. He was finally deported to Theresienstadt. In terrible circumstances, in Theresienstadt, composer Viktor Ullmann encouraged his colleagues to compose and despite the band, continued to organize music nights and compose great works. We understand from the works of Ullmann and the music critics he wrote in Theresienstadt that Ullmann respected his mu musical ancestors and masters such as Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and Schoenberg. He continued this tradition in his understanding of form in music. Although the content of his music is contemporary, he continued pure art in his last work, the piano sonata, which he composed in Theresienstadt, as a tribute to Bach and by placing even his letters into the work. The title of this movement is a variation on a Hebrew song and a few. I would like to quote the musicologist Michael Beckman on this moment. Quote, In the famous coda to the final of Mozart Jupiter's symphony, the main themes of the movement seems to orbit around each other in a kind of classical balance, cycling in timeless perfection. One of the most remarkable passages written in Theresienstadt, or anywhere else for that matter, is a moment in Victor Ullmann's final composition, his piano sonata number no. seven, that seems to channel this Mozartian model. End quote. Then in February 2021, a miracle happened. My dear friend, Dr. Joe Halio, whose family roots go back to Turkey and Greece, who has very valuable studies on the Sephardic language and the Holocaust, and is a contributor to the Dorgar, two many separate Sephardic cultures, including the Castoriani Synagogue in New York, and publisher and writer, uh, the, the Diary of Iber Maneshe. As the continuation of the town Castoria, Greece, Castoriani Synagogue, where the, my grand grandmother originates from, called me and said, Renan, I now have it, it's in my hands. Without hesitating, I understood what he was talking about. Undoubtedly, this must have been the orchestral work of the Auschwitz survivor Michel Asayel, a Jew of Salonika, and we will be very honored to perform in this piece the world premiere at Carnegie Hall next week. Uh, this orchestral piece, Auschwitz Symphonic Band, composed in 1947 and 48 in memory of the five million hostages slaughtered in the concentration camps innocent victims of the most unhuman and barbaric frenzy. I cannot thank enough to the Deborah Asayel for giving a Joe, first of all, and to ask this manuscript to her of her father. My very special thank to the go to go to Joe Halio for keeping up with this work for years and helping it to be performed on 20th of April. Then Joe introduced us to Holocaust Memorial and Total Center of Nassau County, which I was extremely happy about our collaboration. As a musician, a Turkish Sephardic Jew, and someone who has been working on the Holocaust for years, I cannot express the extent of my gratitude to all who put this program together for Carnegie Hall. I offer my deepest appreciation to everyone who walked this path with me and who became as one united in this project. Yura Raika, Ibrahim Yazıcı, Nümhan Atın Sinfoniyatta and Tazli, Andre Bollender, Gay Park, Torin Tritter and Meryl Menashe of HMTC. Special thanks to Susan Halio for the text editing and all of our sponsors, especially Martin Elias, Foreign Minister of Affairs of Turkey, General Counsel of Turkey in New York, the Embassy of Turkey in the United States. 
In tonight's concert, first of all, I will going to play two pieces of Urbija Malankin's, which are 11 piano pieces, who is very skilled in Turkish folkloric music. The third piece of the Yuşlar is Kana, Oxcart. The fourth of the pieces, the Zeybek, is an Aegean dance and is a common dance with the Greek region from Ottoman times. The second composer I will play, Ali Darmar, is both an extraordinary composer and my teacher, my master. Ali Darmar is the son of a family that immigrated from Crete Island, where his mother and aunt were alive Greek was spoken at home. I have always heard Greek in this house where I have been for two, four years. The April Holocaust Memorial is held for the very important Warsaw Greta uprising, which is an example of rebellion. For this reason, I will play two piano pieces by Yossi Mercaccio, the star pianist of the ghetto, who composed 18 piano pieces in Warsaw Ghetto when she was 11 years old. Unfortunately, Yosima passed away at the age of 14 within the borders of the ghetto. And of course, I will play Victor Ullmann's Variations and Fugue, which made me play Mozart in Carnegie Hall. Tonight is also the first time for New Manhattan Sinfonietta. They will be on stage for the first time as the New Manhattan Sinfonietta Quartet. I am very happy that this quartet meets, first of all, as a product of the March of the Music to, to Terezin by L.G. Güral Göçtü, the pride of my March of the Music movement. And the last piece is a Sephardic song from the Middle East. The Jews of Salonika used to sing this song to each other on their way to the gas chambers in Auschwitz. And the song goes like this. Arboles yoran por luvia, y montañas por aire. Anzi yora en mi corazón, Trees cry out for rain and mountains for the wind. My heart cries out in the same way for you, dear lover. May the souls of all those who lost their lives in Holocaust rest in peace. Thank you for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for us to welcome you in the Turkish house. First of all, I would like to greet Turkish Jewish artist Mrs. Renan Cohen. She came all the way from Turkey just a few days ago. I am also thrilled to see that the orchestra at Carnegie on the 20th will be conducted by Maestro Guerra Club. Music composed in response to the Holocaust can add another dimension to our understanding of this strategy. Musical life in the ghettos and camps of Germany and occupied Poland spoke for itself. Music was used by Jews as a form of resistance against persecution and helped us to understand the Holocaust and the experiences of its victims. With this concert, we will respectfully honor the memory of the victims of the Holocaust. In this regard, I would like to welcome and thank Mr. Cohen, Mrs. Cohen, and Mr. Reichel for attending this meaningful pre-concert reception. And I am proud to host the first ever of this kind of meaningful event at the Turkish House tonight. Holocaust was an unprecedented, horrible, human-made disaster in human history. May it always be remembered, may it never be forgotten. As many of you are already aware, Turkey, Turkey is determined to continue its principal policy of remembering the Holocaust and preventing, preventing the recurrence of this crime. Turkey will resolutely continue its efforts to tackle challenges such as anti-Semitism, <coughs> Islamophobia, racism, and xenophobia. Never again is a motto we resolutely pronounce. On this occasion, I remember with deepest respect all Turkish diplomats, namely Serahattin Ülkümen, Necdet Kent, Namı Kemal Yolda, and Nebil Ertok, who did not remain silent to the atrocities and risk their lives to save Jews in the past. Tonight, let me specifically mention Maestro Aykal, world-renowned conductor. We are proud of him. He has a wonderful music career, besides being long-time chief conductor of the National Symphony Orchestra and private orchestras. Now, he is the music director and the conductor of the new Manhattan Symphony Orchestra. I would like to thank Mr. Ibrahim Yazici, 
president of Turkish American Art Society of New York for his great contributions for this event to happen. Mrs. Cohen has been giving recitals in numerous diplomatic missions of Turkey in cooperation with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Turkey. She raises awareness about Holocaust remembrance through her performances. In 2020, she took, she took the stage in the United Nations headquarters with her before sleep recital in memory of Jewish composers Pavel Haas, Victor Ullman, Gideon Klein, and Sigmund Schul, who lost their lives during World War II. Moreover, tonight we have distinguished guests from the American Sephardi Federation and Sephardi Jewish Brotherhood Foundation. As Consulate General, we have developed close and fruitful cooperation with the American Sephardi Federation. Last week, they hosted us in their headquarters. Within the margins of Sephardi Film Festival, we watched together a movie called Bad Talk on Anti-Semitism and Xenophobia. In future, we are open to joint projects both with Sephardi Federation and Sephardi Jewish Brotherhood Foundation. Also, I would like to thank Turkish Sephardi Jewish community members in New York who are with us tonight. You are most welcome as well. We will keep the doors of Turkish House open for anyone who wishes to enjoy Turkish hospitality. Dear guests, this year, 2022, marks the 530th anniversary of the Sephardi Jews' arrival in the Ottoman lands. Ottoman Empire gave shelter and security to expat Jewish people. Sephardi Jews brought new culture, Western perspective, and economic values to us. Since that time, Sephardi Jews has become an integral part of Turkish society, enriching our culture and economy. Having said that, before completing my remarks, once again I remember Holocaust victims with respect and sympathy. We are looking forward to attend the concert in the coming year hall on 20th of April. I wish best performance and good luck. Thank you very much for being with us.